one. One of the biggest questions I get in card making is how to make a pretty bow. And there are some tutorials on my blog, Fun to Stamp, um, that you can go check out on how to tie it without a bow maker. But in an attempt to help my customers, I spoke to my 14-year-old son about making me a bow maker for a recent Christmas card class. And he and his father kind of put their brains together. And this is what they came up with. And I had requested, you know, to have two or three of them. Well, for whatever reason, they decided to make 16 of them. Well, since there were 16 of them, um, I took them to the class. And every one of the ladies there um, wanted one. So I thought, well, if they want one and it's helpful to them, then maybe it would be helpful to you all as well. So he and his father got together and they made some more. So there's another handful of these available if anyone would like one. They're $10.00. They come with four dowels and the block that has the template on it, and there's even a, a ruler at the edge so you can determine what size bow that you think you might like to make. So I'm just going to show you how to make the bows today, and I'm going to remove the two large pegs or dowels, and I'm going to show you how to make, first let's make a two inch bow. Notice the grid, there is a line here and here for our two inch bow. Your pegs, your dowels, are going to be snug in these holes, but that's what you want because if you don't and there's too much flex, they will bend on you and then your bow will be distorted. One loop might be bigger than the other one, that kind of thing. So I'm going to take some real red satin ribbon, and in this process of making these bows, the easiest way to make them I have found, or to tell people how to make them, is to let the right hand do all the work. Now, if you're left-handed, then you would just follow the, the opposite of that. Let the left hand do all the work and hold the right hand still. But I'm going to take, with my first peg on the left, I'm going to hold the tail of my ribbon in my hand still. And I'm going to make a figure eight. Now you can make, you can loop around like this and tie it. But I have found that the prettier bow is the one that makes a figure eight. In addition, the figure eight bow will not come untied on you later. So all I'm doing is holding it still, go in between the pegs, loop around. There's my loop go back around to create the second loop. So if you look at this, here's the loop on the right and the loop on the left, and these are my tails. Again, still holding the left hand still. I'll show you that one more time. In between, around, around the left. Now, the piece in your right hand goes up and under, and this is true for every bow that I'm gonna make, because I'm only gonna show you how to make the figure eight bows, just because I, I think they look better. Okay, so this piece is the piece you want to make sure it's flat and is not folded in half, depending on the ribbon that you're using. It might have a greater tendency to do that. So go ahead and tie this off. You do not need to tie it in a knot because, again, it's not going to come in tied on you. So just tie it once. And there you have a perfect little red bow. In this case, you go ahead and trim your tails and adhere it to your card. Now this is a card I did last year that was so popular, but there's just a use for tying a single bow to put on your card, and I just used a glue dot to adhere that. Okay. This is um, 12 inches of red, so you could probably get away with about 11 or 10. You don't want to cut it too short because then it makes it hard to handle. Now the second bow that I'm going to show you how to make is a one and three quarter inch bow. And again, you would just determine the size of your bow based on your card that you want that bow, the finished product to be. And again, that's why they put the little ruler down here. So in this case, I'm going to use some vanilla seam binding. And this piece of ribbon is about 15 inches long for a one and three quarter inch double looped ribbon. Probably the easiest way to know is determine how much ribbon to use is to put your pegs at the side bow you want and leave it on the spool and tie it and then if you're doing multiple ones just measure one and um, see where to go from there but in this case this is the identical process to the first one left hand is going to hold steel and the right hand is going to do all the work so in between my pegs and around there's loop one figure eight around to the left there's two that's how we did the red one but in this case because I want two loops I'm just going to figure eight again on this side see I have two loops figure eight again on this side two loops doesn't matter where these are they can slide up or down because when we loop tie them off they're going to all come together again take the one in your right hand it's going to go under you can use your left hand if you need to or um, you might could even put a clothespin on there if you wanted to if you really had a hard time holding it so come under, up and over, 
tie this off. Again, no need to knot it because it's not going to come in tight on you. And then pull it off. The figure eight is going to keep these little loops from going and nesting inside of each other, which I think is wonderful. You can tighten that down some more if you need to. Then use a glue dot to adhere, and here's a card with a sample of that. This is from my recent Christmas card class. Okay, so I just trimmed the tails and stuck it on with a glue dot. So pretty. This card was one of the most popular ones. This is also the one that I had the bow maker setting at, out at, at um, the class for everyone to use. And it just made it such a cinch to make all those bows because we're mass producing them. Now, I know that some of you are asking, well, what if I don't want to adhere my bow with a glue dot? So, in this case, I'm going to show you how I would manage that. This is a piece of um, white organza ribbon, and this is about 15 inches as well. Um, you could probably get away with 12 because I'm only going to make a single looped bow. Let's make this one 2 inches again. This is a single loop, okay? Now, remember, same process, left hand still, right hand does all the work. Two loops, up and under, and over, and tie it off. Now, if you were, depending on the application of how you're gonna put your, where you're gonna put your bow, you can do a couple different things. Go ahead and create your bow, leave your tails extra long, is one way to do it, and then you would just wrap this around a card. Here's an example. You could do this. Obviously you'd want to layer this because you would see the tails from behind and then you could adhere it down that way. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it, which is what I'm going to do in this card, and this one's in the process of being finished, is to take your ribbon. You've got one flat piece and I've already been playing with this so it has a little bit of adhesive on it because I was trying to figure out how the best way to show you guys to do this. Put some adhesive on both ends of your ribbon. Because this is a wider ribbon, I'm just gonna fold it. You can fold it in half or fold it in thirds. Doesn't really matter, you're not gonna see it once it's on there. Take one side, put some adhesive on it. Go ahead and stick that down. Okay, then take the other side and because I want this little stocking look like it's hanging. I've just created a loop and I um, put a dimensional underneath that stocking to keep it from moving around on me. It just makes it easier to handle. So loop that through and then stick the other end down. And then you would just take your ribbon, your bow that you created, trim your tails, Okay, these are not perfectly even, but you'll make yours even. But just to save time, put a glue dot on your bow, and then just stick it down. And that's going to cover up where your two ribbons came together. And then just spend a few seconds fluffing it, getting it just the way you like it. Okay. So that's how I would handle dealing with a bow that where I wanted the ribbon to look like it went all the way around. Okay, So there's another application. Now if you want a really large bow, say for a present or even to go on um, a wreath, then you can use these larger pegs and really just you need the larger pegs if you're using a really wide ribbon. And I'm just going to use some of this ribbon because this is just what I have. Again, I did not measure this piece because it really all depends on how big of a bow that I want to make, how big a bow you want to make, and how many loops. So I'm just going to start out leaving it on the spool. Left hand holds steel, right hand goes around, creates one figure eight, another figure eight. Let's see if we can do, let's try to do three loops. I haven't done a three looper. Hold on a second. I'm trying to keep my ribbon from unrolling off the spool because I have it stuck up here. Okay, hold still. So I have one, two loops, two loops. So here's my third loop. Don't worry about them overlapping. 
That's not a big deal. Okay, that's big enough. Oh, and there goes my ribbon. You can probably hear it. Unrolling. I'm going to stop it. Nope, I'm not going to stop. Wonderful. Okay, so now that I have this, I know about how big my ribbon would need to be. So at this point, you can just undo it before you knot it and see how many inches. So 15, 30, so about 45, 46 inches for a, this is, let's move this down. This is a six and a half, if I want to tell you exactly. So that's a five and three quarter inch bow. There's my third one. Okay. Up and over. Pull it to the back. Pretty good, made that. Oh, that's a pretty good size. You can even leave it like this on your bow or your package. Pull it off. And then I have three loops. This would be really pretty with a wired ribbon. I just don't have any. So you can turn it over if you want your tails to be on the back. Like this. Wouldn't that be pretty on a package? Or you can turn it this way if you want the tails to be up. Whatever your preference is. But this is also how you could make a bow to go on a wreath or... Um, uh, some sort of a decorative element if you want to tie it around. So there's your, that's a five and three quarter inch bow. So you can imagine how big a seven and a quarter inch bow would be. It'd be much larger. All right, so that's how you use Aaron's Bow Maker. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And again, you'll find the information at my um, Funda Stamp. Um, blog. You'll find the information at the end of the video of the link for that and you can get your own bow maker that comes with four pegs. Thanks!